Welcome to Off Watch. In previous episodes, we've heard from some of the key players on board Dongfeng Race Team to understand what was happening in those final few miles of the last edition. It was certainly a well-honed team built for success, and perhaps one person is more responsible for that than any other, Bruno Dubois. This is somebody that was performing at the top of his game before stepping back and deciding that his place would be essentially behind a desk, helping others and managing teams to their success. He's worked in the Ocean Race, he's worked in the America's Cup, as well as every top position all across our sport. And his story is quite remarkable. Enjoy. Where do you begin when building a team to take on the challenge of nine months of racing around every corner of the globe through some of the toughest conditions available? Well, most of us would assume that you start with the skipper and then you simply fit in the rest of the team around that person's strengths and weaknesses. But in truth, you have to go behind the sailing team. And that is where you'll find this guest, Bruno Dubois. He's best known to most of us as the director of Dongfeng Race Team since their first entry in the Ocean Race in 2014 to their race winning entry in 2017. But he's somebody that directs from experience with plenty of his own sea miles under his belt and a win in the Mini Transat at 24 on a boat whose sails he made himself, plus skippering and entering the Ocean Race in 89-90. Maybe his success from behind a desk is because of his experience of the front line. Uh, Bruno, thank you very much for joining me today. Hello. Thank you very much. <laughs> nice to see you again. I want to start with something because I, I, I found a really fascinating quote of yours um, where you were talking about this role that you find yourself in at the moment, managing the teams. And you said that I'm not a business manager. I'm not a sailing manager. I'm a mix between the two. And you've certainly got a successful set of skills and people want you running their campaigns. But I was wondering, in some way, you must miss getting cold and wet out on the water. So does winning from the shore mean as much to you as winning on the water? (laughs) You know, you know what? I do not miss anymore um, uh, <laughs> be cold and wet. Um, I was last week with um, uh, I was last week with the you know the Mirpuri sailing team in Kashkai and they left they left for an overnight sailing and it was bloody cold. <laughs> I was in the hotel working and having a good dinner. I've done it. It's enough. It's enough for me. I kind of enjoy in, indeed. I I can enjoy, you know putting oil a little bit everywhere just to make sure everything is working fine. And because I spent a lot of time on the water and a lot of time managing, you know, North sales for, for, for many, many years, you know, I always say that when I will be a, a grow up person, I hope I could become a team manager. And that's what I'm, I'm able to do is since 2015. And I don't know if I'm successful, but, I'm I'm managing, you know, you know, a good project, like very interesting project to to work on. Well, I want to talk about what you're doing at the moment because you're somebody that, from the success that you had with Dongfeng Race Team, you haven't stopped. You know, you're 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 looking for more of it. But I want to go back because when I was reading uh, as much of your story as I could find, there was very little that I could find about you in the 89-90 edition of the race where you were skippering um, Rukuner Sport, if I'm pronouncing that right, and I'm probably yeah, not. Yeah. Um, but I, I find that fascinating that you're somebody that now has such an impact on the race. And there you were back in the race all those years ago. And, and I wonder with all the experience and all the lessons learnt now, how do you describe the sailor that you were back then well i was 28 okay at 20 years old years old i was the skipper of Rikano sport and and it was a tough one first of all because you had you know big names there you know grand dalton was there with fisher and Packle, um steinlager with sir you know peter blake and you know it it was a tough one because we, we we were in a small boat, we didn't have enough money, I think, to 
to do things right. And there is one thing that now you can realize when when you watch the movie Maiden, you realize that was also the year where Maiden came in and 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 they did very, very well. And I think they deserve to have a lot of more press and a lot of um, you know, more attention than than us. You know, we're just a bunch of blokes coming from Belgium, from France, from from Holland. It was a mixed, you know, we were not British. It was the Whitbread race at that time. It was a lot of, you know, I remember Barry Pictel was the journalist Follow the Race. And he I understand he was after Rothman's, you know, Laurie Smith and all those guys. That was a fantastic year. But it was very hard for us. Honestly, for me, I think I lost my hair during that race. <laughs> it was really tough because um, we, we had a couple of accidents on a boat and we broke the rudder after the start in New Zealand. So we didn't manage to compete for the final prize, you know. And, 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 and because of that, you know, and, and it was tough also, you know, mentally with the crew, you know, I, you know, at that time we didn't have mental preparator. We didn't have, you know, psychologists to work with us and everything. And, you know, that was the beginning of, a, of the professional sailing and we tried to do our best, but I, I, I would say that I, I, we didn't do very well. I didn't do very well as a skipper to, to hold everybody together. And and I remember some crew told me at the end, so Bruno, I'm not gonna sail with you anymore. Didn't work very well. And and I keep remember that, you know. And 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 I think that's one of the things who really helped me to grow up. Because after that, I took more responsibility at North Sales, I became the manager, I became, you know, part of the executive group of of you know of North Sales. So I always grow. And in all those years with, um, you know, not problem, but, you know, not success, you know, I kept that in, in myself and said, how can I be a very good team manager? And, and I, I'm not sure I'm, I'm, I'm a very good one, but I know one thing is that try to mix performance, but also I, I really try I remember Charles Caudrelier told me when, when we started together, he said, look, I would like to do this Volvo Ocean Race, but I would like to do it with a very good atmosphere in the team because it's going to be long, long, and very long. And we did two editions together. So we spent, we spent you know, oh, yeah, we spent four years together trying to succeed. And, uh, and to succeed at one point, you need to, to have the, the team spirit and, you know, I have to be honest with you, we won in 2018 and we still have the WhatsApp group from the team. And there is not one week when there is not, you know, somebody who just sent a joke or, and Charlie is very good at that, you know, with his, you know, stupid second degree humor. Um, he is, he's always on. And then between like, you know, the, the rugby game last week between France and, and England, you know, it was on and on and on the all the evening. So it's it's for sure it's fantastic when after two years people are still get together and as soon as they can and they work together in in different environment. For me, I'm 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 spending my time on CLGP and also helping uh, Team Mipuri and and with CLGP I'm taking some uh, some some guys from Dongfeng with me and the same with Mipuri. They they're jumping. So we work we keep working together. So that's reason why I think it's a very, very interesting experience. But it didn't start very well, honestly. I, I didn't start like Laurie Smith arriving, rock and roll, and just, um, you know, clean up the place. No, it was really painful. And, and a couple of times, I, I, you know, I wonder if, you know, I should have stopped. But, you know, since I have a hard time to take no as an answer, you know, as a good salesman, you know, it's, I kept going and I don't know, it's, after 30 years, it still seem, seems working now. <laughs> In fact, um, it, it's fascinating. You talk about that, that, that team environment and that mentality. Cause when I got the opportunity to talk to Charles Cordrelia in the first season of off watch, he said exactly the same thing. And he said with a smile that the WhatsApp group was, was continuing. 
And just before I ask you a question about you and Charles and, and, and that topic, I just want to say one thing because I know there'll be some people that pick up on it. Um, it was uh, France, Wales, and confusing Wales and England is like confusing France and Belgium. You, you, it's very important know, to, to some people. England um, was the, the, the time before... The, the Brit- oh, okay, fine. Okay, fine. Fine, fine, fine. fine. The Brit- you know, they didn't say anything about Wales. They just show us, when it was France, England, they show a fork in their hands and the forks were like, were totally squeezed. That's the only picture they sent. No, they, they don't want to talk about Wales. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just putting out the fire before it gets smoldering. Um, really interesting when you say that after that that campaign with with Ruckineer Sport and and of course you were young and you were learning you know for any skipper there are really only three performance metrics did everyone come back safe did you sail well did you perform well on the scoreboard and does your team want to sail with you again to have some people turn around and say you know this was not a good experience I'm dumb I wonder with does things like that really stay in your mind? And when you were with Charles with Dongfeng Race Team, did you ever have to? Um, did you ever see anybody making some of the state mistakes that maybe you say that you made when you were younger? You know, or did that team cohesion was it just natural from the word go? Uh, well, it didn't happen to me because I'm I'm older now and I know where I'm, I'm stepping, really, but. Yeah, it's, you know, well, every single team has some tension. And it's the way we're managing this, those tensions, which, you know, make the success or the failure. And and I know it's at the end, and Bao Baking is really good at that. He always said, you know, we have to keep all our munition for the last legs. You know, he took his sails for the last leg. He got... Peter Burling with him and everything, and he was growing and, and getting better and better. And it, it's true. And it's like for the America's Cup, you know, your, your last race is the most important one. So, it, you know, it, it has been, you know, uh, I, I'm I'm quite honest with you. Um, it is, this Volvo, this Whitbread in 89, I remember the dinner at the prize giving, I was between Peter Blake and Pierre Fellman. And they asked me, so, okay, Bruno, how, how did you enjoy your race? And I said, well, honestly, I didn't enjoy it because it was tough and and we didn't have, you know, in, enough resource. We broke stuff. And because when things go wrong, I think the team is not following up and everything. And they start laughing and say, look, how old are you? I said, 28. Ah, oh, we all have been through that, Bruno. But because we have been through that, that's the only reason why we're winning now. Is because they know, and I kept. I remember Peter Blake and 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 both. You know, Peter Blake and uh, and Pierre Feldman told me that exactly this, those words. Exactly, they were laughing. I felt so bad when it, they were laughing. And they said, "Look, the experience you took here is the success in the future." So I'm happy. I prefer to have the success now than at that time. <laughs> It'd be interesting that you were saying before that being a team manager was, I mean, correct me if I misunderstand you, but being a team manager was already on your to-do list. You were already thinking about getting those skills because, of course, you you know, you didn't come back and do the race again as crew member or, or, or as skipper. Was that experience in 89, 90 enough that you can go, okay, I've got some good experience here. I've done some things right, done some things wrong. Now I need to get maybe some business experience. I need to keep working with North Sales. I need to push. And then I'm going to come back as a team manager. Was it, or, or was doing the race again ever tempting? Uh, yeah, I tried to do the one in 93. Um, and I have to be honest with you, uh, you know, I stayed in Belgium at that time. And and it was, and our sponsor really asked, we have a multicultural um, team, something that I always, you know, I, I believe I'm a citizen of the world and I'm not necessarily Belgium or Canadian or French. I'm very open, you know, to work with everybody. And, you know, it was not exactly the way the journalists were in Belgium at that time. They were not really happy that a, a, a Belgian boat had like French or Dutch on the boat and everything. It was a bit tense. 
So I said, look, you know what? It's time for me to go. I moved to Canada. My wife is Canadian and we moved there. And, uh, and it was a time I thought I wanted to have a family, okay, a large family. And I didn't really want to stay alone and just sailing, sailing, sailing all the time. I thought that in order to grow up, you need to have, for me, I wanted to have a business side a little bit more developed. And that's a way to have a proper job. And by having a proper job, you can have, you can afford to have the family because professional sailing is happening now. But in 89, 90, it was half of the year. Or maybe some guys like Michel Desjoyeaux or Roland Jourdain or Jean Le Cam managed to do it. But also at that time, as a, as a sailmaker, I managed to meet new people. And, and I wanted to do the, 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 the wheat bread again, but that, then I met... You know, Laurent Bourgnon in France, um, his crew was Thomas Coville and the Ravusin family and all those guys. And, and, and I started discovering the offshore sailing in France. And in, in fact, in, uh, in Canada, in the United States, they always told me, no, just don't, don't spend your time on that. There is no money there. It's just adventure. That's exactly what they had to tell me in order for me to pursue and, and the guys in Europe, like in Denmark, North Sail Denmark, you know, I moved from the, the North America to, to Europe, to Denmark. And, and those guys really believe that offshore sailing will happen one day. So I started working with Hélène MacArthur, Laurent, Laurent Bourgnon, and then we started doing the Jules Verne. And then suddenly I've left the Anglo-Saxon world of the Whitbread to move to the French part where I felt, you know, really comfortable. But by the way, one day, um, I, I, you know, I could have jumped on a second race. You know, I could have done also with um, Code d'Or before Riconor. In fact, I was invited by um, Luc Emance and, and Eric Tabarly to join, and, and I didn't join. Really. Um, I had another job for the Tour de France, and I wanted to stay with my wife. I was in love, and and I and I, keep, I kept saying all the time, say, can you imagine that Bilou, Roland Jourdain, Michdej, all those guys that I knew, they they went on that boat, and I simply refused. Say, no, sorry, I'm I'm busy. I'm doing other things. Big mistake. <laughs> but uh, but it's okay. It's okay. It's part of life. But um, um, yeah, the business side, like you you, you said, it's was in, important for me. Uh, I thought it it's a good way to grow up and to understand. In fact. It, it, it's fascinating to hear you talk about sort of drop in, uh, you know, the Whitbread as it was back then, you know, uh, the, the America's Cup. Um, all the other events that you've kind of got got your your um, experience from, because of course, from for fans of the Ocean Race. Dongfeng race team, obviously, with that incredible moment at the at the finish, and and you know what a way for that event to wrap. Um, but you've been very um, you know busy in between all those iconic moments that we talk so much about on this show. In between those editions, because of course with Dongfeng race team, the fourteen fifteen edition, then you go in with the America's Cup with Group Armor. Um, you come back, obviously, with Dongfeng race team for the second time. Can you give us an idea as to what what that was like with Group Hammer? Because, of course, with Group Hammer at that point in the America's Cup, it was a campaign that, well, it didn't go the same way that Dong Fong Race Team did. Let, you know, let's say that. Is there any way that you, um, is there any specific thing that you go, ah, you know, if I had my roll of the dice again with that team, maybe if we move some things around, things might have clicked into a better gear? Yeah, yeah, I think... And I keep, you know, hoping that France will have a chance one day to, again, to have proper budget and time to work on it and, and, and get all the French who are on all the team in the America's Cup, get all of them together to work again for that. But, yeah, we during the first race, <clears throat> when we arrived in Lorient, I got a phone call from Frank Camas. He said, look, I think we have a go. From Groupama, would like would you like to come and join? And I say yeah, sure, because I knew working for, with Frank is very in, inspiring, obviously, and you know he's 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 pushing he's pushing the people to get the best out of the people, 
and and it's 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 sometimes hard for some people, but but if you accept that it's pushing you to the limit, and, and when you are at those limits, it is where you find your extra performance, and that's what it is because that's what he, he likes. He likes performance. He's not there for the show. He's there for the because he enjoyed it. So it, it was very interesting moment. I met very interesting people. I think a lot of our people are with were with Luna Rosa this time in the America's Cup. Uh, we took them from Luna Rosa and then they worked with us for two years and then back to Luna Rosa after that. Some of the French guys, some of the the others are with Ineos and it's and and you know it was and, and others with American Magic. Very, very interesting uh, campaign. Obviously when you don't win you question, but I'm sure people from Ineos this time they learn a lot to be better next time. That's that's where you learn is when you fail, I think. But that was good to do between the two the two um the two Volvo Ocean Race because I came back with a different view and 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 that's when we met the sponsor with Charles and we said, look, if you really want to win, because don't Fong put victory in our contract. Okay. So we, we knew that you know they, they would not put us in jail if uh, if we didn't win. That was not the point. But it was clear. So hang, hang on, sorry, 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 hang on. Let, let, let me just pause you there for a second. It, when you say they put victory in the contract, there was a you know, you're not just doing this to get round. This is the goal to win. The first the first race, the first time they put that we had to put on the, to be on the podium. So we, we've been on the podium, it was fine. Now, I don't know what would have happened, you know, there, there's, <laughs> you know, there is no law against that. So there's, there's, you know, if we finish last, that was, that was it. But the second time, yeah, they say, look, now you it was the podium, you have to be first. And uh, that was in the contract, I remember that. But I said, okay, fine, we'll do everything. We'll, we'll set up the table to win. But to set up the table, we need to make sure we do not while well, we we have the proper support and that's the part where we knew from the first campaign that we knew we need a Marcel Ventris to help us even if it was only for the last leg Marcel was there at every single stopover he was very good on a on a jury room you know when we were in trouble he was very good and when you have Marcel and uh, Stu Ballantyne, you know, in a jury room in front of the international jury, I can tell you they know what they are talking about. And, you know, it was maybe for only for the last leg, but then we had somebody to take care of the mast, full time working on the mast, making sure everything was perfect, NDT, the mast. So we didn't left anything under the stone. And, and we had, a you know, somebody who came at each top over to talk to the sailor. He was very humble, very quiet. We didn't make a lot of advertising on that. The guy was there, he's an Olympic judo, you know, athlete. And he came and talked to Charles and talked to the guy because for sure the team had a up and down, you know, we had some low moment in, in Hong Kong and in, Guang, in, uh, in Guangzhou. It was hard, more, everybody, you know, it was pretty tough and, you know, Vestas had this accident when they crashed on the boat. It was the atmosphere in the race in general was not really good. It was tough. So we we had all those people working on different area and yeah, we didn't left anything under, you know, un, unexplored, I would say. And we had a, a short team, a fantastic short team, and, and we had more short team, short people than everybody, I agree. That means we had a bigger budget than most of the people. Does, <laughs> does this now mean that you have the winning formula? I mean, going forward, do, do, do other teams go, right, we, we need to get Bruno Dubois and the playbook on now how you build a team and how you win the race? Um, no, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think we're not alone. There's a lot of people who know how to do it. There's, you know, people like Groupama, Frank Hamas did it totally differently. But always the one who win, they have a, 
they have they have experience from past race and they have experience like I look at Ericsson and and you know the ones before with AB Namro, you know, Moose, he, he knew how to do it. And but each time they have some good budget to to make sure everybody is comfortable. And it's not nice to say because we are the time where we would like to reduce budget as much as we can. But um yeah, it's a technical sport, so you need to have a new mass before you start. You need to change the keel. And, and, and that's what I'm spending my time with Paolo Mirpuri, explaining him what, you know, what is necessary. And you'll see the boat in Lorient for the start of the Ocean Race Europe. The boat looks nicer than it was with Don Fong. The guys have done a fantastic job, but they, they took everything off. And, and, and that's what has to be done. Because who knows what's going to break, you know. Those boats are going for the third third time around the world, man. So it's something. Yeah, and of course they were never meant to go around the world three times. You know, it was it was in everybody's minds that the VO65 was going to do two editions and that was going to be it. They've done well. It's you know, it's a good model. You know, people people are pleased to see them come back. Of course, so I imagine that there is an awful lot of work um, to do. Give us a little bit of an idea, because we talk so much on this show about the sailing and the pressures on physical and the sort of mental aspects of sort of sailing the race and everything. But, of course, so much of your work at the moment is what you described. It's going to be budgetary. It's going to be raising the capital to go out there and do it. Just with everything, with COVID and everything else like that, um, and with your work with GP, with your work with the America's Cup, commercially the sport of sailing where do we go right and where do we go wrong how are we going to last the sort of tests like this uh, I, first of all i think um, and, and i think race like you know the ocean race or sail gp they fully understood that um you cannot sit in front of a ceo and tell them that you would like sponsorship to go for a yacht race. There's, there's no need for that anymore. You know, those guys, you need a purpose, you need a reason why you are doing this race. And sailing is, is there to serve the purpose, the why, you know, Mark Turner liked to say that, you know, the why. I think it's, it's that's the way it is now. You need, and it doesn't have to be necessarily sustainability. It could be a, you know, gender equity and equality between women and, 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 and men in terms of salary and the way to, to work, or you can try to have a mix of people in your team and it could be disabled people. And, you know, it depends, but people want to really give sponsorship to, to people who, who are going to make a, the world better or going to work on a better world. And, and and I think it, the companies or the sports uh, league who manage to take that turn, um, they will succeed. And and we all of us we we had about a year to think about it. You know, with CLGP we start about twelve months ago, and we say to Russell, look, Russell, a professional sailing league with the best athlete sailor of the world. Sorry, but it's going to be a tough one commercially. And he fully understood. He said, okay, guys, let's go where you think it is the best way to go. And and the ocean race is going that way. And I think Anne Cecil Turner has been pushing on that. Not now. She has been pushing that for many, many years because she knew it was the only way to go in the future. And, and, and it's going to be only worse in the future. I think companies will not spend money for just for... You know, even the Formula One is trying to find a reason to build those cars. And, and there are some good reasons. I'm sure we are, we'll have a better world and the car will be way better because of all the development we have on the Formula One or Formula E. And it's the same with the boats. I'm sure foil, foil uh, will make a difference in the future in, a, in the fuel consumption with cargo ship or the wing or the material, the sailing material. So for sure it will be different. 
the, yeah, there's one little bit of, sorry, you've just, you've reminded me of something, but um, uh, we spoke to James Blake on series one and he was talking about the, the, the kites. I want to get this right. The kites, not as in a spinnaker, but as in an actual kite, like a ginormous kite surfing kite that were made for the VO 65s in the previous edition in case the engine broke and they were going to, and there's, it's fascinating to, to think about, yeah, the technologies that can be developed, tested, and then sort of put out um, into sort of the other, you know, the other world. You, you talked about gender equality. And I wonder whether you're a good person to ask about this, because of course, you were there back in 89, 90, you mentioned it before. People remember that edition for the clean sweep of Steinlager 2 and for Maiden. And that was a huge moment back then. And there was a really interesting um, quote that I read from you when you were talking about the other class that's going to be in the next edition of the Ocean Race, the Amokas. And the 65s, it's cramped living, but we're used to seeing teams of, you know, reasonable numbers. Whereas on the Amokas, one person has a bit of room, two, it's getting a bit tight four or five people and suddenly there's not a lot of room so it's pretty pretty tough and you said um that it, it's good that there's a rule that we're going to have a gender um incentive for mixed teams because if there wasn't a rule you wouldn't see a lot of women sailing there i wonder whether because you know from way back in 89 you were there and now what you see with not just the ocean race, but just in offshore sailing in general, do you are you hopeful that things are going the right way fast enough? Or, I mean, what's your take on it? Well, it's you could say that it's not fast enough because since Maiden, there's not much happened. Well, yeah, it happened with, you know, EF language and, you know, always women's team and SCA also. But having women sailing with men... It, if we didn't have a rule, since the men are, are leading, um, it will not happen. And no, I think the rules have to be there. If 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 we don't if we don't give the chance to the woman to be there in the men's world, they will not go. And sailing is an opportunity. It's a place where they can maybe in rugby you'll not have a mixed in rugby. But in sailing, you can do it. It's possible to do it. And, you know, there's some class where you don't have to do this, those rules. Look at the, the Vendée Globe. You don't, you don't need to have a quota of women because they come automatically because they're really good at that. Now, on GP, it's a bit different. And Russell has decided that for Bermuda, we have to have two women with us. And we'll be sailing at six now with one woman on the boat. And we need to... Give them the opportunity to be there. And, and if we keep pushing, maybe not this year, maybe not in 2022, but maybe in 23, there will be a full, full women's team or a team with helmsman, flight controller, wing trimmer, and then men's grinding. But you need the role, unfortunately. And, and I know, you know, when we had the roles in, in 2017, 18, you know, my good friend Mark came up with about 10's ID. And because we knew, with Charles, we knew him very, very well. We knew some of his ID, he will never give up. And some of the skippers start fighting against the woman, saying, no, it's too much. And we straight went to Marie and um, Caroline because we thought that they were the top one that we would like to have. And before, you know, be talking to them before other team talked to them and we signed them up right away. I think it was a good move because they became, you know, Rolex woman, you know, of the world, <laughs> sailor of the world. So the rules are necessary. I think it's important. Okay, so let's let's jump to now then. Let, let, let's talk about um, the Mopori Foundation racing for the planet. Um, and that team is is out there and it's racing. And one thing that seems to come out from that uh, initiative there's a lot of passion behind it. Um, I know not, not only from um, not only from Paolo, but but from everybody involved. I just wonder where do you see 
that team, and specifically, what do you see in Johan Rochon? How is he shaping up under your eyes? Um, so, <laughs> Johan, uh, you know, when when uh, we finished the race, I think you know Paolo called um, Chao to have a meeting with him, and Chao asked me to join join him in in, uh, in Lisbon, and we talk with with Paolo, explaining a little bit our vision of the race, and and. But we really wanted to let Paolo set up the rules of what he wants. You know, he's a private owner, he's got his company, he's got his foundation, and he wants to <clears throat> he wants to he wants to set up the the pace, uh, and that's really important for us. We, we're doing what Paolo wants to do, and 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 he's got a good vision. He knows he knows where he's going. In fact, and you know, we we propose Johan with Charles because he won twice the Figaro and 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 he come from a French environment where Charles come from. He never done the Volvo before. He's done a lot of offshore sailing. He's done a lot of crew racing, and he kind of like the management. He's different than Charles, uh, but he's very structured also, like Charles. He, He's got a vision where he's going. He's, he's good with communication. He, he knows it's important. So it's a very complete sailor. He's quite young. You know, he's, he was 34, I think, when we started working with him. So I think it's good. And, he, he, you know, they just spent two weeks in Qashqai training. And, and obviously the setup is fantastic in Qashqai for training and He's very structured, very well structured. You know, he's got Nicole Unven as a navigator. He's got Jack Boutel as a watch captain and Willie Altaldil, two are, you know, watch captain. You have, you know, Federico and Bernardo who were on Turn the Tide on Plastic before. Yeah, well, that, well, that, well, that's the funny thing because you're mentioning these names and they all seem to me quite young. But of course, they're also coming with quite a lot of experience, not least on the 65, but also of the race as well. It's quite nice that there's all these kind of young people that don't come uh, fresh out the wrapper. You know, they've been around the world. Yeah, there's, yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's most of them already have a one one trip around the planet. Um, and and what, what Johan is really good at, and that's what he probably is very similar to Charles on that, he said that, um, what is important is to have the best team and how we're going to put all the things together. You know, we have Mariana Lobato, um, you know, as one of the women on the boat, and we have Emily Nagel, who was with uh, Axel Nobel last time. And, you know, our shore manager is Antonio. Antonio was with Scaliwag, you know, and, you know, he's, he's from... Um, he's from, um, from Lisbon also there, and he's married with Mariana, so... It's a family, you know. We we all live in you know in two houses. We have a chef, and it's it's a very nice atmosphere. And then, you know, one of our short crew um, from Dongfeng, um, Oli, is just joined us as a bowman. And we have Rob Bones also who was a Figaro sailor, never sailed the Volvo Ocean Race, but he's joining as a as a trimmer. So overall, it's a young. Experience, maybe we we don't have the big rock star, no, like we we had before, like a Pablo Arte or Stu Manentine or or Daryl Lewis Lang. We don't have those guys right now because right now we're doing the Ocean Race Europe. You know, when the boat will do the Ocean Race, it will be a different case. We'll have to think a little bit. Yeah, I can imagine trying to fit all that around with the COVID restrictions and everything. It's not easy and time on the water of course is going to be like any campaigns even this early out it's going to be absolutely crucial um i won't press you to go into details but i'm always fascinated that in the last edition of the race it felt like the 65s were getting closer and closer in terms of speed and performance it was harder to find some way to go three knots quicker than your rival. You know, everybody knew the secrets. And of course, Dongfeng race team had, you guys had the secrets. You had the secrets in the 14, 15 edition and you had your secrets in the 17, 18 edition, but then of course, everyone else found out about them. So my question is, at the moment with the team, are you training the team 
to be as fast as you were in 17, 18? Or have you found ways to make the 65 go even faster? Well, the it will be different because we, uh, well, first of all, we, we start with the database from Dongfeng. So we have that, we have the, you know, the polars and everything. We know exactly the speed that we had with Dongfeng and the keel angle and everything from Dongfeng. So that was fine. But now there is a new, a new sail into the game. So we have a spinnaker, a nylon spinnaker. And in 2017-18, we had a sort of A3, um, which was a bit you know different material that we had in 14-15, a bit smaller. So it was a sail that very quickly all the team left aside and didn't use anymore. So we all were stuck with what we call the triple head, masthead jenniker, um, you know, masthead zero, you know, um, J2 and J3 sail. So in order to go fast with, you know, in medium, medium wind, you need to heat up. So everybody were, you know, stay together all the time because you couldn't bear away. Nobody really try or had the guts to do it at one moment, put the A3 and just go 10 degrees lower. But I think overall, when we calculate that, the numbers were not as good if you did that. But this time, we have a 450 square meter sail, way bigger sail, that you could go lower. And that's the whole work to that we're doing now, try to find out if the A4 is better than a triple head, because now it's going to open the game. Instead of having everybody with the same sail and follow up and everything, sometimes some people were going slower because they have less experience or the driver were not as good as the other one. But this time, you know, people will put different sails and go different direction. So it will be very interesting to find out um, during the Ocean Race Europe. And, and so there's a lot of thing, new things to discover. I think, and it's it's very that's that's what make in you know, the next race interesting. I think, and and it, like you say, it's going to make the next few months interesting because, of course, the Ocean Race Europe is when we're going to get a chance to see all the teams, you know, that are at the moment sort of you know sailing on the sixty fives and that A four. I didn't think about it in terms of in terms of that that soon we're going to get to test that sail that's yeah i'm going to have a careful look at you know how people are doing on those downwind angles um bruno i'm going to let you go thank you very 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 much um it's it's dizzying to hear you talk about all the different projects that you were involved with and how much work you are still doing at the moment so i'm sure you're a busy man so thank you very much for taking the time thank to talk very much, to me. talk soon see you a big thanks to Bruno Dubois for taking the time to talk to me and for being so honest uh, in retelling his story and why it is that he finds himself in the position that he is now. If you enjoyed this interview, we've got many more coming up as well as all the ones in our back catalogue and you can subscribe to our channel for all the latest updates and we'll see you soon.